Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, I'm essentially an engineer. I did my first degree in electrical and computer systems engineering. And I did my PhD in the Department of Otolaryngology in the Faculty of Medicine. So I'm half a engineer and half a doctor, but I'm not allowed to touch human beings because I'm not licensed. Okay, so I can do animals, I can do circuits, and what's really interesting is, as an engineer, is that you can think of the future. We are often wrong, but at least we can try. Okay. So one of the things that we wanted to do was to see how we can help uh, elderly people, all of us who age after some time, and see whether we can develop technology which is so ubiquitous, so prevalent, that you don't even know it exists. So many of you who use your smartphones, you appreciate why and how easy the smartphone is. So we are trying to do something like this, and what we have is a printed electronics. So essentially, I have the printed electronics in here. This is a full electronic circuit. We can print our electronics on plastic film, on paper, on aluminum, on cloth, and so forth. Okay. So if you imagine in the future, near future, when you design a particular circuit, you send your design to a online, you ship it by online to a shop. The shop will take about two or three hours, and the shop can print your circuit. So imagine you say, I want to design my own handphone. You design your handphone, you send it online. Four hours later, you go to the shop, pay the guy $20, and you get your own handphone. Now, what's really interesting is that it is even possible today to do it yourself. So the topic today is on do-it-yourself printed electronics. And I'll show you a couple of very interesting applications that, that might become true. Okay, how, did, how did this whole thing start? Okay, it started by three chemists who developed plastic that can conduct electricity. So most of us, when we think of plastic, we think of plastic as an insulator. So these three gentlemen, they received the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 2000 for the discovery and development of conductive polymers. So remember that when you do science, the good thing about science is that every day is an interesting day. So we enjoy ourselves all the time in the lab. We don't have to be bankers, talk to customers. We just work on our game and play. Okay, so what they did and they discovered that plastic can indeed, under certain circumstances, be made to behave like metal. So because you can make plastic conductive, you can now make many electronic circuits on many forms. Okay, so if you look at printed electronics, so you look at traditional electronics, this is what is in your handphones, in your tablets, so you have something like this. This is a microprocessor, which is a computer. It's very rigid. And then it's mounted on a printed circuit board, which is also very rigid. Now, we're going to talk about the future. We don't want, to, we don't want things to be rigid. We want to stick things everywhere. So for instance, we can stick electronic circuits here on your skin and then you can actually stretch it. So you can think of the huge amount of possibilities for technology like this. So printed electronics is essentially organic semiconductors, usually in a solution form, so that you can print it. And you can print it using technology like inkjet, screen printing. These are media art printing. So let's see what kind of applications they have today. So you can stick sensors on your hand. So for instance, one of the applications we are looking at is if you have a wound on your hand, 
you stick an intelligent plaster. So the plaster will tell you, mm, your, your wound is not healing. So you need to seek medical attention. You can do displays. You can stick things into your mouth. Perhaps when you go and see your in-laws, you might, you might think that they are giving you something extra to drink. You might be able to find out. You can print lighting. And in robotics, now you can put many sensors on your fingers. Hopefully it behaves like a human hand. You can print batteries. You can print RFIDs. In case you don't know what RFIDs is, it's radio frequency identification tags. So your EasyLink cards or MRT is an RFID. So maybe if some of you are interested, come and see me and maybe we can hack to get free MRT rides. <laughs> or if you are a banker, every time you go to the MRT machine, instead of just getting a free ride, get them to increase the money you have in your car. <laughs> so how big is this market? This is very futuristic. So if you look in here, this is the size of the market, and this is the years. So the market now is about $5 billion. In about eight years' time, it will probably be about $50 billion. So it's a huge growth emerging technology. Now, so what we developed so far, remember that our intention for many of our research is to try and commercialize our stuff and has fun doing things. So our technology is what we call fully additive, which essentially means when you want to build something, you just add, 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 and you build your stuff. Okay. And the good thing is that you can actually do it yourself. Before we had our machines, we were doing this in my kitchen. My graduate students would come to my home, and we would be doing this printing in my kitchen. Okay, and then I'll show you a couple of very interesting examples. Okay, how do we do this? This is the printing process that we have is almost identical to the way you print your t-shirts. So I've seen some students here with an ACJC sign on the t-shirt. That's exactly the same. So I'll show you how the t-shirt is made, or printed, and then how we do our printing. The first thing, of course, is you get a mask, and you make your pattern. So this particular pattern is first and number one. And then after that, you take your squeegee. So this is your squeegee here. You put your ink, and then you wipe across. And then you get your first pattern on your t-shirt, which is here, first and one. And if you want a multicolored t-shirt, you repeat this the number of times according to your number of colors. So if you do say uh, four different colors, so there are five colors in here, you repeat this thing uh, four times. So our, t our printed electronics is very much the same, but now it is circuit design. So we designed our first circuit by making the screen. This is exactly the same mask that the t-shirt maker uses. So every time we speak to the t-shirt mask maker, we tell them, please don't cut corners. Because t-shirts, they will tell you, if you miss a corner, nobody can see. But in our case, if you miss a corner, the circuit would not work. So you make a screen. As before, you take a squeegee. So in this case here, we put some solder paste, our silver paste. We swipe with our squeegee. And then you get your first pattern on a plastic film. And then you repeat this thing X number of times, and then you get your full electronic circuit. Okay, so the process is the same. In other words, this is going to be very cheap. Now remember that the technology now is going towards Internet of Things, so they expect in the next few years, each human being would have 10 smart circuits for every individual. So it's going to be in your shoes, it's going to be on your clothes, 
It's going to be in your toilet paper and so forth. It's going to be everywhere. Okay, so I'll show you a video of how it's made. So you put a piece of plastic on a metal. This is a t-shirt printing machine. So this is our first mask. And we will put some materials on the mask. So that's the squeegee here. So the squeegee will wipe across the mask. And then we get our first layer of our circuit. So we can repeat this X number of times and then you get your circuit. So the wonderful thing here is that if you do your design at night, you send your design to the shop by email, by 8 o'clock, by lunchtime, you can collect your circuit. So you can print many, many things and it goes really quickly. So the spirit of printed electronics, and it's different from the electronics that you have today, it's going to be green because chemicals we use are very environmentally friendly. You can print anywhere, like in my kitchen. My wife disagrees with that, but we did that. You can print anytime, anywhere, very cheaply and very quickly. So it's really a complement to what the electronics we have today. Okay, so these are some of the circuits that we have printed. They are fully functional circuits. And now I'll show you a couple of applications, especially for the uh, rapidly aging societies that we have in the developed world, including Singapore. So one of the major problems is medication adherence. In other words, uh, someone like my mom, she takes five different drugs. In the morning, she takes two. Lunch, she has three. In the evening, there'll be two. At night, there'll be four. So it's very complex. So this system would allow you to uh, remind you when to take your drugs. So the question is like this, when you break a tablet, the signal will be sent to your handphone and then it goes to the cloud and it goes to me. So if my mom takes two drugs instead of one, the system would alert me Then I'll call my mom, hey mom, what's happening? Do you need an ambulance? Because you have taken an overdose. So how we do this is we print a smart film and we stick it to the tablet. So in the so the, the entire system works like this. When you break your tablet, it goes to the phone, it goes to the cloud, it goes to the pharmaceutical company. The pharmaceutical company would say, yes, this is an authentic drug, because there are a lot of fake drugs around. Then it goes to the doctor, it goes to the caregiver. For me, for instance, my mom takes a drug, I know she's taken a drug on time. Okay, I'll give you another example. So we talk a lot about smart homes. So a lot of people's vision of smart homes would be, I will take a handphone, and I need to, if I need to adjust the air conditioner in my room, I'll start pressing many buttons, and I need to find the air conditioner for my room. So in the future, what we envision is a smart wall. So you talk to the wall. So for instance, you ask the wall, uh, what's the temperature in my room? Then the wall will reply, it is 28 degrees. Would you like your air conditioner adjusted? You say, yes, please turn the air conditioner to 22 degrees. So what we do in this particular application, we have a, a sample wall in here. We have an array of microphones. So the microphones can track the user. So if I walk from one end of the room, and if there are three persons talking in the room, you can beam steer such that the microphone only picks me up. And we can also print very thin loudspeakers. So if you see in here, this is a very thin loudspeaker. It's only 20 microns thick. So you can stick it to the wallpaper, and then it behaves like the wallpaper. So I'll give you an example of the actual sound that comes up from our speaking wall. What's the temperature now? It's about 31 degrees Celsius outside. Hot. How many TVs do I have? So this 
is the actual sound from these ultra thin loudspeakers. So in the future, if I cook my food in a microwave, I walk up to my bedroom, I take my shower, when the food is cooked, microwave will talk to the wall, the wall in the kitchen will talk to the wall in my room, and if I'm standing in my room, the oven will talk to me and say, Joseph, your food is ready. And then I said, oh, I'm too busy. Go away. Then the food gets cold. And I said, I would like to eat now. And the oven would say, your food is now cold. Would you like me to cook the food again or warm it up? So this will make your life extremely simple. Thank you.